A Fox News alert. The Trump administration's crackdown on illegal immigration now underway. There will be ICE raids in nine cities, but protesters and elected officials could make things difficult for ICE agents. Joining us now, the acting ICE director, Matt Albans. Mr. Director, what is happening this morning at this moment? Well, I won't speak to specifically anything that's going on in an operational perspective. The overarching concern when we conduct any sort of enforcement operation is the safety and security of both our officers that are conducting the operation as well as the public. But I will say that I think using the term raid does everybody a disservice. We are doing targeted enforcement actions against specific individuals who have had their day in immigration court and have been ordered removed by an immigration judge. We are merely executing those lawfully issued judges' orders. That's an important point to make, uh, Director. These individuals had a, uh, their day in court, and now they have been deemed appropriate for removal. And we understand there is somewhere around 2,000. I know you can't speak to specifics, but try and give us, if you will, some indication of who these individuals are. Well, these are individuals who have come to this country illegally, um, had the opportunity to make an asylum claim in front of an immigration judge, and most of them chose not to avail themselves of that opportunity and didn't even show up for their first hearing. But in addition to that, we went above and beyond in this circumstance and gave these individuals back in February an opportunity to turn themselves in to arrange for an orderly process to be removed from the country. Um, vast majority of them, only 3%, actually responded to those letters and came in um, and arranged for those, those processes to go through. The rest of them ignored not only the judge's orders, but also our request for them to come in. At this point, we have no choice but to go out and execute those lawfully issued removal orders from an immigration judge. Director Albans, uh, mayors across the country are actually encouraging people to resist these enforcement operations. I want you to take a listen. I'd like your reaction. There's a tremendous amount of fear in our city. So what we're trying to do is lower the fear by giving them information, and the information is empowering them. Let me be clear. We do not assist with immigration enforcement. We have been and will be and will continue to be a sanctuary city. We will continue to stand behind our immigrant communities. There's anxiety that's being created, not just in our immigrant community, yeah. but with anyone who has passion, compassion and concern for human beings. Director, your reaction? Well, look, I think the entire public is safer when law enforcement works together. Um, there are those occasions in which we don't ask law enforcement to enforce immigration laws on our behalf. Most of our interaction with law enforcement is simply information sharing, or most times it's actually just trying to get access to individuals that those agencies have already arrested and are sitting in their custody, in their jails, where we want access to to make sure that we know who's in those facilities, are they here legally, and if they're not here illegally, then we remove them from the country. Um, it's, it's, it's incredulous that it's okay for these law enforcement agencies and these jurisdictions to enforce law, the laws that they're sworn to uphold, but when we come in to do our enforcement that we're sworn to uphold, all of a sudden it's a problem. Director, you have just, ICE has just released moments ago a declined detainer report, a quarterly report you are going to begin today and do so forth every quarter. What is this? So this is a report that was mandated by the president's executive order back in 2017. Um, what we're doing right now is highlighting the dangers caused by some of these sanctuary cities' policies. For example, one of the cases that we highlight in this report is an individual who was arrested in January of last year in Los Angeles for possession of controlled substance. We lodged a detainer on that individual so that we could take custody of him, of him when he was released uh, by the county. They chose not to honor that detainer, and the next month he's arrested for murder. We have another individual in San Francisco who was arrested 10 times over the course of a single year. That individual is a one-man crime spree, and every single time he was arrested, we tried to get custody of that individual from San Francisco, and they chose not to give it to us. And the sad part is a lot of these laws, the law enforcement agencies, they want to cooperate with us. It's the politicians and it's these jurisdictions that prevent them from doing so. We have great relationships across the law enforcement spectrum. The National Sheriff's Association is one of our best friends out there. They want to enforce the law. They want to assist us, um, but sometimes they're prohibited from doing so by either state laws or executive order. I want to ask you about protesters in Aurora, Colorado, raising, taking down an American flag, raising a Mexican flag. They also raised a Blue Lives Matter flag upside down, the sign for distress, and wrote abolish ICE on it. Well, I, I think it's disgraceful. Um, these are individuals, both the ones that work in our correctional facilities that are, or their detention facilities that are our contractors as well as our own officers in there. These individuals are enforcing the laws that Congress has passed. If the individuals don't like the laws that Congress passed, they shouldn't be picketing our buildings. They should be picketing Congress. Director, are you concerned that Congress is not 
going to give you the support, bipartisan support, to do the interior enforcement that we have heard from so many officials over the last year that you need to do going forward from here uh, on these enforcement actions today and then going forward? I'm absolutely concerned. As we've seen time and again, we've failed to get the support that we need, whether it's in terms of fixing loopholes in the law, which are creating this crisis at the border, whether it's in terms of funding so that, one, we can detain the individuals that we have in custody or that have been arrested by the Border Patrol or by our, our ICE officers, and two, so, so we actually have the resources to go out and do it. I will tell you this, Griff, there is no way you will ever have border security without a strong interior enforcement component. If anybody says that they can, they don't know what they're talking about. Director Albans, we wish you and all of your agents safety today as you carry out the rule of law. Thank you for taking time, and uh, we look forward to hearing more as this uh, debate clearly continues, and certainly, sadly, so does the crisis. Thank you, Director Albans. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it.